Hi and welcome back to a new video. We cannot do any kind of performance tests yet, but we can talk a bit more about DDR5, which will still be very interesting. If you have no idea about DDR5 so far, which I don't assume, but if that's the case, I would absolutely recommend the recent video from Linus Tech Tips because he basically had all the important information within only 10 minutes about DDR5. So I will not go too much into detail about how DDR5 works, and we will try to figure out the power consumption of an individual stick in today's video. At least if it works out the way I'm imagining it. The module I just presented to you is a 4800C40 module, which is not that quick. It's an engineering module, which I got fairly early for DDR5 testing. It's not featuring any kind of heatsink, which makes it a lot easier for our probing and testing today. Meanwhile, I also received those Vengeance kits. Those are 5200C38. And meanwhile, I also received these Dominator modules, first edition DDR5, serial number 21, 5200C36. But everything performance related next week after the 4th of November. We already know that 5 volt will be delivered to the PMIC, the small IC which is sitting in the center, from the PSU over the main board to the stick. And this PMIC is transforming this voltage into the three output voltages which are required for DDR5. That's VPP, VDD and VDDQ. And we have a ton of surrounding components, but it's still fairly simple. PMIC in the center, then two small inductors on the left, and a ton of MLCC caps surrounding it. Now what I will do first is checking which of those MLCCs are actually carrying which voltage. And if we are very lucky, the big one on the right could actually be input voltage and that would make things very, very simple. The image you're seeing now is the voltage regulating area of the DDR5 module. We're starting off with the ground area. I just probed everything on the MLCCs, so the teal colored area is ground. Everything you see now in yellow is the 5 volt input, but it also shows that we have multiple 5 volt input areas probably coming from inside the PCB. That's why we also see those vias inside the PCB, so it won't be that easy to simply cut off 5 volt and then measure it again. It's not that easy. The purple mark is VPP and I also added the stock voltage that's entirely without XMP is 1.8 volt. It's on the right side. On the left side we have the VDD voltage 1.05 volt stock. That's the voltage which gets typically increased by XMP voltage. Same as the VDDQ voltage now marked green also 1.05 volt stock without XMP and that's also on the left side. The reason why I checked for the individual voltages is because I want to know which of these pins is running 5 volts. Because right now I don't have any pin out, I'm actually waiting for that. Should probably get this tomorrow, but I want to have this video done by today. So I will just rework it like reverse engineer. We'll check which of those points 5 volt will be connected to our pins. Then I can simply tape the 5 volt pins and then we can hook up a cable to our 5 volt input points right up here. And that should allow that we simply hook up a current clamp to the cable which will go to our DIM, simply connect it to 5 volt from a PSU for example, and then we can measure with our current clamp how much current in amps is running to the stick directly and this way figure out how much power draw a DDR5 stick in this category has. I would currently assume without data sheet that DDR4 and DDR5 are very close to each other, just considering that it's the same amount of pins and uh, should be almost identical. So I set the multimeter to give me a signal if there is a direct connection. We know that 5 volt up here and 5 volt down there is connected. And what we're doing now is simply just run with our probe across all the pins. So we know already that the first one identical to DDR4 is VCC. But we can now swipe simply across, check if we can hear anything. But apart from the first pin, seems to be nothing else which is 5 volt. Everything else is probably data connection. I mean there's always a risk if you're doing something like this because you're also running a voltage through the multimeter through your DIM so that could potentially damage the DIM but I guess it should be fine. It's the same on the back side I'm just holding the second probing point with my left arm with my left hand 
and now just swiping again across the dim from the back side but you will see just the first pin will give us a signal so it's the first pin on both sides which is VCC 5 volt there you can see the first pin is covered on front and back side there is already one stick present in the system I will just plug the second one and then if the second one is not getting detected and if we cannot measure any voltage might probably work so unfortunately I can still measure 5 volt seems like I missed something or it somehow made a connection I measured again on the back side it seemed to be the first two pins and not only the first pin I will add more tape and try again now that looks much better um, it's still reading 0.3 volt but that could be because I'm using ground from a much different location on the board so different circuit but I have to check if the second dim is getting detected or not this looks perfect slot 2 is the dim I used earlier for the probing now if I switch to slot 1 which is still the populated slot but it doesn't read out anything so that's perfect so I prepared my Molex adapter cable simply to hook up the DIMM to the PSU this is simply 5 volt and I will attach this cable to the SMD right on uh, top right and that was earlier marked yellow with 5 volt input I hope that will work out Might not be perfect, but it work. I just double checked before hooking up the PSU. It's again on this point I soldered to, like the wire. It's also reading 0.3 volt. So it should be the same situation as before. And now I can plug in the PSU and double check if it works. Both sticks are fully working with external power. Meanwhile, one day later, and I finally received the pinout for the DDR5 modules. I will show it to you so you can make use of that if you will ever need it. Not sure about that. I added everything in a table and you can find a picture of a dim on the left for the orientation to see which one is pin 1 and which one is pin 144 for the front side, for example. And looking at the front side, there is only pin 1, which is VIN. So that's the 5 volt input and everything else is basically like data pins and VSS. VSS basically means ground. Looking at the back just confirms what you already found. Two pins have V in, two pins have 5 volt and apart from a ton of ground and data pins we also have power enable and power good pins which are probably for the PMIC to signalize to the PMIC that it should just start uh, supplying the dim with the voltage which is also interesting so we could probably also disable the PMIC and then supply the voltage fully external which means like e-power for the dim itself so we could supply VDD, VDDQ and VPP directly to the dim without using the PMIC which would probably allow a wider range of supply voltage. But now let's talk about our power measurement results of this single dim which is featuring 8 micron dice it's single-sided and we're looking at the first results which were 4800 CL38 with a voltage of 1.25 that's basically the XMP profile. Windows 11 idle was just above 3 watt running ADA64 read it's above 5 watt and ADA64 copy about 6 watt. If we now increase the clock to 5200 CL38 which also requires a higher voltage of VDDQ running at 1.35 and VDD as well running 1.35 we have about the same voltage in idle but the load under ADA64 read is just below 7 watt and ADA64 copy above 7 watt. If we increase this further with 5400 CL38 it requires 1.5 volt VDDQ and it's staying at 1.35 VDD. The idle power consumption does not change but read is at above 7 watt and ADA64 copy also just straight above 8 watt. Which is quite interesting looking at the fact that it's a single sided dim with 8 micron dies. So to keep it easy it's probably 1 watt per die. Depending on your configuration on your clocks something between 0.5 to 1 watt per chip which is not really much and should be absolutely in line with uh, DDR4. I know that in theory DDR5 power consumption should be lower than DDR4 but that's probably only if you stick to like the very low voltages maybe the 1.05 volt 
I don't know. But whenever you're doing overclocking on the dim itself and also running higher voltages, obviously the power consumption will be higher, but it's still in the same region as what we've seen with uh, DDR4. And yeah, I mean, it's a single-sided dim, eight watt for, for one dim. If it's a dual-sided, obviously the power consumption will be higher. Could be, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 watt maybe. And also you have to keep in mind, it de will depend on your configuration. If you run four dims and four dual-sided dims, then yeah, power consumption could be somewhere between 30 and 40 watt of your dims. And that might require additional cooling, but all the like high-end sticks already have heat spreaders on them. And as long as there is some sort of airflow across the dims should be absolutely fine. I guess it was still interesting. It was very easy to do that on DDR5, much easier than DDR4. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.